Now let's end this section by exporting the results of a procedure. So let's say this my first procedure and the results of a view into Excel. So what we could do is just literally copy and paste like we have done in the previous video. But suppose we wanted to create a connection from SQL Server into Excel. What's the advantage of a connection over copying and pasting? The advantage is we can refresh the connection. So if the data changes, we can have the latest data in Excel just by clicking refresh rather than having to do all the copying and pasting again. So let's create a connection. So I'm going to create a completely blank spreadsheet and I'm going to go into data and I'm going to get data from a database from an SQL Server database. Now this version of Excel that I'm using is Excel 2019. If you have an earlier version of Excel, you may have a slightly different set of menu options. For instance, this is what it looks like in Excel 2016. I would still go to the data tab and I would click on from other sources. So get external data from other sources and I would then go to SQL Server. So let's get information from SQL Server database. And the first thing it asks is, okay, where is your SQL Server database? Um, it's just there, it's, well, you can't do that. Instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going back to the Object Explorer, I'm going to click Connect, Database Engine, and I'm going to copy the server name. You may, of course, have credentials from your system administrator. And then the name of the database, well, I might as well put that in as well. Name of the database is my first database. So to get the name, I'll right and click on it, go to rename, just allows me to copy and paste. So it says, what credentials do I use? Well, I'll use my standard Windows credentials. So I'll click connect. Again, if you're using an earlier version of Excel, what you're seeing might be slightly different. So I'm going to use an unencrypted connection because this is literally on my computer. So what I'm going to get is a view. So I can get my first view and you can see a preview of what that looks like. So what I've now got is my view and I'm going to load this data into Excel. So I just need to give it a minute or two, getting the data, and there's the data. So the great thing about this is that whenever the data changes, I can just click refresh. In the table tools design, I have to actually be in the table to refresh, and it will refresh the data. It will re-query SQL Server and get the very latest, and that saves an awful lot of time if all of your data is stored in SQL Server. So that's a way of getting tables and queries. But what about getting procedures? Well, almost exactly the same. So I'm going to get data from database, from SQL Server database. Again, I need the name of the server. So I'll just copy that. And I'll need in this case, the name of the database, so my first database. But now I click on advanced options, and this is where I can type in my SQL Server statement. So my advice, if you're doing this, is to create your SQL Server statement. So it could be a store procedure, or you could be creating your own custom select statement. So if I just do a very quick one here, so select, Start from table transactions where the product, the purchase order ID is less than 10. So just write your select statement in SSMS, execute it, make sure it works, and then copy the code. Don't copy the results, but copy the code into Excel 
and then click OK. And there's your answer. Similarly, if I was creating a connection to a database stored procedure, exactly the same thing. So I need the database name if I'm using SQL code or stored procedure. And I just get my execute. And that's all I need. So that creates my connection. So if ever the data changes, I can just refresh and my Excel data becomes the most recent. So this is how you can connect SQL Server as the back end to Excel as the front end.